the um, 13th of May. Um, we'll start off with the karakia from um, Phil. Morena te koutou. Um, whakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga, ki, uh, ki a mā kina kina ki uta, ki a mā tara tara ki tai, he hi akiana te atakura, he tio, he huka, he ho hu, te he mauri ora. Thank you, Phil. Um, we've then now got the health and safety statement that we always have. Um, Dave, do you want to just quickly go over that? <coughs> Um, happy for this to be taken as read. Everyone in the room is familiar. If there's any questions, just fire away. Thank you, Dave. Um, apologies, we are all here, so there's no apologies that I know of. Um, well, yeah, just to end, assuming. Yeah, you know, Deputy Mayor Angela just might have to go early um, for a four o'clock meeting, but I'm not preempting anything. I, th I think we should be well and truly away um, by four o'clock. Um, Disclosures of interest. Any disclosures of interest? No, if none. Okay, confirmation of the agenda. Can I have a mover and a second? Seconder, please. Thank you, Rodney, and a seconder. Thanks, Len. All those in favour? Those against? Carried. And. Right. Yeah. Uh, f first of all, I'd just like to say. Um, to Nigel and his team, to the staff, um, to get us this far, and um, with everything, the roller coaster of information that's been coming in, whether it was the GPS or the the ship, just thank you very, very much. I think you've done a fantastic job um, this year for the um, long term plan for the uh, regional transport committee. Um, so I'd just like to just to start off with a thank you to um, all, all all your team and and the people that are sitting around this um, table. Um, staff will lead in step by the by step process today, uh, working through the um, RLTP and section based on the council report. And I've I've just uh, with Dave broken that. You know, instead of you would have seen a one long resolution or three page resolution, we're going to break that down. Um, so we kind of move through uh, the agenda um, and sign off each each part. So we've kind of broken it into eleven parts. Keen to have an open dialogue and uh, staff here to answer uh, questions and guide the, dis the discussion. Um, and so we'll make decisions as as we go. Um, have an attachment one open to refer to through the day. So just keep your attachment one open up to refer during the day. So good morning, Nigel. I'll let you lead off this session this morning. Unless Bill, did you want to say something? No. Uh, thank you, Councillor Downard. Um, good morning and uh, good morning, committee members. And um, thank you for that acknowledgement of the team. I'm really proud of the work that they've they've done and uh, getting you here today. Um, thank you for the overview about how we'll, we'll step through it. Um, that gives a really good lead in to, to what we're doing here today. Um, as Councillor Downard mentioned, very long list of recommendations, probably the longest we've put together in terms of a, a set of resolutions to work through. But what this does is it gives us an opportunity to address the substantive areas of change within the document. And that's the guidance that we'll take from the, the committee here today. Um, and then that is how we will be building and developing the final plan for, for your um, response. A lot of this is um, obviously here uh, with us at the moment. Um, as Councillor Downard also mentioned, the report that you've received Two parts, attachment one, really important to have and to, to work through over the course of the day. That gives a lot of the rationale for the background and the reason for some of those recommendations. And so we'll be able to, to step that through with you. Um, I'm really uh, happy to have the team here alongside me. They can answer questions far, far better than I can, um, being far closer to the document in terms of its development. So as we tease things out, um, again, I'll probably refer to, to members of the team that have different areas of expertise as we go through. Um, I guess members will be aware, again, as Councillor Down had mentioned, um, there has been a lot of change in the last little while. So the, the um, recommendations and the changes that we see here are responding to how do we incorporate the GPS best into our RLTP? How do we account for the um, Sat Howe investment proposal? And what does that mean for both the um, front end of the document, but also our prioritised list of activities, which we'll take you through uh, this morning. 
Um, and uh, also, as mentioned, we do have a, a PowerPoint on the on the um, on the board for us, which will give us a bit of a roadmap for for where we go here today. Um, and so, based on based on the decisions that you make here today, this will inform the final final plan ahead of bringing it back to the RTC in June. Uh, what we are hoping to do with that is circulate a strike through type copy for you before you see that uh, at the RTC so you can actually see what the impacts are of the wording and recommendations that you you make here today in terms of the final plan. Um, sorry, LJ, we might. Oh, yep, if we go to the next slide, please. I think I might have done all of the introductions. Um, that probably covers the introduction to deliberations for us there. Um, next slide, please, LJ. Thank you. And then we move to the, the current state of play. Um, so I guess the, some of this is, again, informed by additional input that we've received over the last couple of weeks. We had the opportunity to test uh, with our regional advisory group um, the impact of the um, significant activities and how they are prioritised. But again, wanting to, to get the input of, of members here today. Um, and so we will uh, have that ready and available for you to, to have a look at. Um, and then again, uh, actually. Thank you. This is the benefit of having the team right here beside me too. Um, so as this is just the preamble, there is additional information that we will be able to provide with you in each of the, the subject matter areas to provide that, that area of um, that background and information for you. Um, as you can see there at the bottom, there is a um, significance attached to some of the recommended changes. And over the last week, we have sought legal opinion on that. Um, so at the end of the day, there will be a, an adapted resolution that we have a look at to determine uh, what our position is with regards to significance. Um, we're fairly confident as a team that we won't be in a position that this re needs re-notification. Um, and so that's that's good for us um, because again we don't want to go to that ex, uh, that expense and delay um, and again that potentially could uh, if if we were in that position um, really impact our ability to uh, make an application through the National Land Transport Fund. But um, as part of the resolutions that we do at the end of the day, we'll take something here for for your consideration to just note that the committee has. Um, uh, been provided with that information and that we are not recommending a uh, going out to notification, but it could be through targeted consultation. That's why I've left that resolution right at the end right of the end. last one so that can Perfect. be, uh, we can go, gives the staff time to ratify that during Thank you. the day. Thank you. So yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll probably be the last thing you do today, folks. Um, and so again, thinking of the, the process that we've we've been through, um, using using this roadmap ahead of us. Um, so we will, we will follow through the key matters that need to be deliberated on, and that follows pretty much the form of, of attachment one uh, as we go through. And um, as uh, Councillor Down had mentioned, we'll break those into uh, recommendations and, and look to approve those as we go through. So you're not subject to a massive barrage of them um, at, the, at the end and um, remembering <laughs> uh, what it is that we have worked through over the course of the day. Uh, really important for us will be having a look at um, where, where did we land with regards to those significant prioritised activities. And we've taken account of obviously new introductions through the ship. The theory behind a lot of what we have done in terms of that prioritisation is to keep it as consistent as possible, uh, notwithstanding some of the, the new, new activities that need to come in and some of the deletions from, from the um, previous one. Um, and again, as the the note that you've got there, we'll we'll have a look at what the submitted themes and recommendations are as as we go through. Just to make clear too that that a lot of these recommendations were over the whole lot of the su submissions. So you know Correct. we had eighty nine um, written ones, and then I think twenty one, twenty two um, submitted. So Correct. just wanted to make that clear that you know all these recommendations taken to all those submitters into account. Really, really good point. Thank you. Um, next slide, please, Audrey. Right. Uh, current state of play with the RLTP development. Um, as you can see here, uh, there is 
quite a lot that has been happening at the moment. Um, so we've been developing, obviously, as individual authorities to our, our regional programme. Um, and so just making sure that this is reflecting what's coming through in long-term plan developments. Um, so we have updated them, as you can see there, but there are still subject to a, to a bit of change as we complete those processes. Th this isn't new to us. This, this happens for every RLCP development. What has been different for us this time is the late receipt of the GPS and making sure that we're accounting for um, the, the SHIP program and, and those other aspects. But we often do find ourselves coming right to the end of the process and still needing to account for long-term plan updates. The good thing is we've been able to start taking account of some of that uh, as it's been signaled to us um, through, but we will um, still continue to update that program with information as it comes in. And again, uh, we're getting greater clarity in terms of how the ship has come through and what those activities look like. Um, I mentioned earlier there is a redrafted uh, prioritised list that's coming through. Um, it hasn't been easy to get that list, so it'll be really, really great to get that political guidance in terms of how that feels for people. Um, and so, again, this has been updated as a result of what we've learned about the ship, what the um, submission views are that have come through, and um, as Councillor Down had mentioned, uh, obviously not just the submitters that we heard on the day uh, during hearings, but throughout the um, totality of the submissions that we've had come through. Um, and I'd mentioned too that the, the regional advisory group have had the opportunity to see that and cast a bit of a technical lens across that. So we met with them last Monday um, and they have a high level of comfort with, with where we've landed with that as a, um, uh, as a, as a final position. Julie has reminded me that we do have a couple of councils within our region that are um, obviously not going through a long-term plan process and have opted to do enhanced annual plans. Um, and so from that regard, there has been a request and that came through um, uh, quite clearly for us through the regional advisory group interaction to make sure we've got a hook that just sits on top of our activity tables that says actually as a result of the process and potentially going through uh, another sort of um, council engagement process next year with it, that we have an opportunity to introduce new activities without prejudice to the rest of the plan. And so effectively we can do that by way of variation. That's That happens in plans in the future, but just being very explicit that actually not all of our region is in the same political process when it comes to developing long term plans at the moment. <clears throat> Sorry, Nigel, I know Eugene's the one. Yep. Who's the other? Uh, WIPA oh, wow. are also going through that at the moment too. So, um, and and what that will mean is that a lot of the program is probably already set and, and Waikato is probably quite happy with it, but should they go through an enhanced process next year and new activities get introduced, that we don't have to do a full re-notification of the RLTP as a result. So we'll treat it by way of variation for, for that in the future. Um, Right, uh, next slide, please, LJ. This is it. Oh no, sorry. Stay. <laughs> um, now, do we have the prioritised list available to us? Um, so the first first opportunity that we're going to take this morning, and we've got. Um, so, I should have I should have said everybody's names at the beginning, but you've got some, you've, you've, you've met most of my team over the course of the development, um, but obviously we've got Madeline, Madeline on the far side, Julie who's sitting sitting to my right, Kimberly to the left, and Kana Sakai, um, who we don't have a name tag for, but has been instrumental in developing our program tables. And we'll take you through this morning. Um, what is being circulated in front of you now um, is the hard copy version of the um, prioritised activity list. And so this is where I will take a step back and hand over to staff in terms of um, taking us through the next technical elements of where we have landed with uh, the programme. I just thought I'd make it um, a bit clearer that today there are two um, key things that we need to do in order for you to answer the question and be satisfied yourself that the document will be um, consistent with the GPS and in order to answer the significance question. 
um, and to be satisfied that um, we can proceed to finalising the draft. So those two key things are one, going through the regionally significant prioritised list of activities, because that is something that you haven't yet seen, um, taking into account the new ship activities and stakeholder views on the prioritised position of those activities. So we thought we would handle this first um, and then see where the land lies with this. And then we need to go through the individual um, submission themes and uh, look at how to resolve those. So by um, doing these two key sort of um, tasks today, uh, that puts you in a better position to be able to um, answer those, those big fundamental questions at the end in terms of GPS consistency and significance of change to the document. So I thought I'd just um, clarify that. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Matt. Good clarification. Um, and Kim has just also um, let me know too, you'll have two documents that you see that they're effectively the same. One is uh, condensed for clarity, and that's the landscape version that you've you've got. And then the other has the strike through with the activities that have come either in or out um, of the program just to help assist assist reading in terms of where we get to with the um with that prioritized list. It just give us the colour code as well. Um, oh, Nigel, the yellow, um, the brown and the I, I might need somebody else to do the colour coding for me. My colour blindness often prevents me from from seeing it. But um oh, sorry, maybe, yeah, maybe I, see it. Um, I think if we get Kana to take us through the yeah. two the two tables and then I'm going to take you through um key things that you need to think about in relation to those um, tables. Yep. All right, Kana, the floor is yours. Yep, just bend it down towards you, Annika. Portrait one is the, the program including the removed activities. So gray one means the removed one. Uh, at the last uh, hearing a committee, the new ship was published, and that means that all Waka Kotai MSB activities removed. And the following day, the all TAs resubmit RLTP, and HCC has removed walking and the cycling project. So gray one means removed. The red one is new activities that Waka Kotai introduced including road of significant activities. The yellow one, it means the change in the name. They have new name or new ranking. The landscape version is not including removed activities. So the, la the landscape one is our current recommendation recommended program <laughs> okay so we had a we had a draft program that went out um, and that was with the the activities before the ship came came in and that's what that that's what's in the in the document and then Kana did her magic and brought in the new uh, ship activities um, she took a like for like sort of um, process to try and uh, logically sort of uh, put a position in for these um, projects like um, Southern Links. Um, that went to RAG and they had a discussion, but they didn't have a very firm view on how they felt about that and they didn't make any endorsements. What they did comment on was the perhaps the anomaly of Coromandel Bypass in the context of the larger ROPS projects. So we came back from the RAG meeting and the policy team then put a policy lens over that, that adapted list and said, OK, if we take GPS priorities into account, we take our regional priorities into account and we take into account the views of submitters, what would that table best look like? So the red table, the red priority order, is our best uh, attempt at trying to put before you a recommended prioritised table to to you know as, as to start kick off um, deliberations today to kick off discussion about what you think about that order there, 
So what we did was we uh, we had a look at um, uh, Southern, uh, sorry, at Cambridge to Pierre as a starting point and said, okay, well, it went out for consultation at priority number four. There was uh, a lot of support for that project even before it became confirmed as a RONS and the GPS. Um, and you'll see in your attachment one that we've outlined key things to think about with each of the projects. Page, starting on page uh, three, down the bottom there. So if you're thinking about Cambridge to Piaderi and the position for that, there in paragraph 23, key things to consider. Oh, sorry, it's agenda page 22. I'm looking at the bottom instead of the top. So if we start with Cambridge to Peer area, it's a it's a bronze project that has national benefits and regional benefits. Um, it it uh, gives effect to the um, economic development and productivity GPS strategic priority. It gives effect to our own um, economic development and safety priorities. Um, and so there was quite a lot of uh, support from key um, transport partners such as the AA to Waka. Um, Waipa District Council and others. Um, really, when you think about the potential of moving that down, um, you know, I'd like you to think about whether you could really justify moving moving the activity down the list, given its importance nationally and regionally. Um, so that's Cambridge to Pierre. So then the other ones activity that's coming in with the ship is Southern Links. So key things to consider about where the priority should go for Southern Links. It's explicitly um, the a number of submitters want it explicitly recognised in the plan, including key submitters like Waikato Airport and Titanium Park, um, AA, Tamahiri Community, Barker and Associates, um, and it's it's a RONS project. So our our sort of logical starting point was it probably should be with Cambridge to Pierre with Cambridge to Pierre perhaps having wider national benefits. And so we thought there was logic in putting some links under Cambridge to Pierre. Uh, then if you look at the resilience package of activities, um, as you heard at the hearing, um, the Coromandel Haraki um, project's been uh, replaced with a similar project, but reduced level of funding. But what has come in are a number of the um, one lane bridges. That were a key. That, that was a key theme, a key issue for Coromandel submitters. So I'm sure they'll be very happy to see um, government commitment to those bridges um, to come in. So key things thinking about the Coromandel package. Um, again, as you are aware, the majority of submitters on the draft plan were Coromandel submitters, and we heard some really passionate um, arguments about the need for really focusing our plan on resilience of the Coromandel Peninsula. Um, you know, it's important also, we heard from TCDC that um, it's important for maintaining the profile of applications they're making for other funding sources. Uh, you know, given the strategic priorities, not only at the national level in the GPS, but in our own, uh, our own draft plan, where we have prioritised resilience and climate change as our key number one priority. Again, um, you know, you need to think about what would happen if you started moving those projects down the list. Coromandel bypass, however, is a different issue. And the key thing there that I think is really important to take into consideration is how such a um, small project, small in scope, how that stacks up against something like a Wands project in terms of wider benefits. And the key thing there is that there was um, quite a lot of chatter through the hearings, um, through the submission process, I should say, in terms of whether Coromandel residents were uh, supporting that or not. Um, a lot of them were not supporting the bypass. Um, the arguments put up were uh, essentially it um, didn't provide the wider resilience benefits that other projects might provide or, or funding going into other resilience projects. There was a lot of concern about its location 
and the fact that the Coromandel um, community wanted to be consulted before any decisions were made. So something's got to give in bringing in new ship activities and also, as you're aware, some of our activities have been kicked out the updated ship, the final ship. So um, we do need to think about what, you know, what on balance can go up and down to give the most effect to having a, a program that is um, consistent with the GPS, but is also consistent with where we want to go regionally. So, so that's a that's a key sort of focal point for you, thinking yep. about. Um, Madeline, sorry, Angela, have you got a question to ask, or would you like? Yeah, I'll, I'll let Madeline. Oh yeah, thank you. Um, and then the other resilience project down at the other end of the region, Bully Point. Um, that's currently number one. Um, again, there was, um, you know, a, a good amount of support for that project. The, the key thing that I noticed in the uh, submissions was that there was really any commentary about the position of projects. And in the past, mm. there's been a lot of that. So I think you can take good faith that um, the, the submitter community was quite, um, quite comfortable with the prioritised list that went out in the draft. So... Again, if you're still, you know, not moving things around too much, you're still giving, um, still being true to to those submissions. Um, so, Bully Point wasn't contested as number one from anyone. It was supported by a few key submitters, um, and also a key point there that Horizons Regional Council um, has an investment project over the border, which they're keen to see the totality of that resilience package across the boundary. Um, and then the last sort of tranche of activities, because we're really focusing on the sort of top 10 of the prioritised list to think about, is the Metro Spatial Plan activities. And you heard at the hearing that, unfortunately, uh, all of the Waka Kotahi NZTA MSP projects have been removed from the ship. So that has quite um, a large effect on our prioritised program that went out to the public because I think they were, they filled up sort of five to 10, the positions, five to 10. Um, but we still have a couple of key MSP projects um, in there, Hamilton City Council's one in WIPA. Um, so key things to think of there. And um, I think this is important to sort of understand for later on when we come to talk about some meta views on MSP activities and wider, wider outcomes that, that the region's chasing around, you know, integrated modal transport, um, is that regardless of what's been taken out, um, we feel it's very important to keep sight of that longer term view. Um, you know, MSP is still a, a critical sort of transformation change maker for our region in the longer term. So we feel it's really important that the signals are still in the document should funding become available. Um, because really it is what in the future is going to transform our, particularly for our urban future-proof area, our transport system. So I've just taken sort of the top sort of 10 package of activities, pointed out some key things to sort of think about. Um, we can start to have a conversation and debate about, so what we're really looking at is the red column, which is our final recommendation, which has taken the work that Kana did when the ship first came in. It's um, been to RAG, like I said, there wasn't a hugely firm view on that, but there was concern about Coromandel Bypass. We've run the policy lens over, making sure that we give you the best recommended list that will speak to GPS and regional priorities, and importantly, to submit a views where we feel, because we, at the end of the day, when you come back and decide whether uh, you know, how much the document will significantly change and then the import of that in terms of um, the um, consultation that's been undertaken. If we can try and give effect as much as possible to those key three, those three key things, then I think you can feel more comfortable that your prioritised list of regionally significant activities will be consistent and will meet those statutory tests. Thanks, you, Madeline. Angela? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, thank you, Madeline, for your um, introduction. Um, yeah, 
I always <laughs> struggle with knowing when to, what the process is and when we're talking about what. Um, so I'll just say a few yeah, things and then, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just sort of holding in my mind as well. Um, I said on the future proof hearings, um, so holding that strategy in my mind as well um, in regards to southern links probably. Um, and we know that Wakukutahi have done the form and function review. And I'm just curious as to what your sort of uh, inkling was to submitters wanting southern links in there, what that might look like, though, because we know initially it looks different to what it could look like now under the form and function review. It's um, in the staging and phasing of, yeah. Um, I do recall hearing, you know, everyone agrees that the airport road, you know, is really important to do first. It's just everything that comes afterwards is, um, yeah, enables different things, what it looks like, yeah. So if it is going to be separated, um, four-lane highway, it doesn't enable what we need it to enable. So you're just keen to hear your thoughts around Southern Links a bit more, and then I've got a few more. But. Thank you. Um, so I suppose from a submitter point of view, the first critical thing was to get it recognised the long term. So to get it recognised in the plan, in the programme, but also up front. So um, some submitters were very helpful in outlining where in the plan they wanted to see it um, recognised. And so throughout the recommendations, you'll see where we've, um, as we work through the day, where we are um, intending on updating the plan. So um, from a submitter point of view, it's about getting Southern Links recognised in the plan, having some narrative around it that describes the importance of it um, to the future functioning of the, you know, that southern future-proof area, um, but also recognising the form and function review and how important that is. Um, and I think we can deal with that too through our uh, policy implementation actions um, and incorporate that in there. From a um, project point of view, um, David might be better <laughs> positioned to answer that. So the form and function review doesn't have any statutory weight or anything like that, right? It's simply a is this it's simply a look back to say is this still important? It concluded Southern Links is still important. It concluded that, and, and remember the form and function review was done before the RONS. So so um, the the RONS has come out saying there should all be four lane grade separated, 110 k's an hour, but subsequently. The ministers clarified that that's subject to us going through the business plan process and making sure that you know, whatever we build makes sense. So we haven't done that yet for Southern Links. So that, yeah, from a project point of view, it's fine. What we wanted to see was that it's acknowledged and it's in the RLTP. The project itself will then determine what the smartest investment looks like for. In, in reality, it'll be a four lane. It'll it'll be a four lane grade separated highway through to. State Highway 3, and then after State Highway 3, we'll see. Thanks, team. Oh, I'm pretty happy um, myself um, with the changes that the um, staff or the recommendations of staff with the seven of the activities. I mean, obviously, the the, the big um, loser, if there is a loser in this, is, is the MSP, um, where we had... Um, virtually 10 in the in the top 20 and we've gone down to five which still shows that we're um it's still um high on our priority um i think with the submitters and uh that came in that presented in all through um the written submissions i think the coromandel and len you might want to comment on this i think you know it was heard loud and clear and and i think we weren't too far off the the ball when we first did the significant activities, we heard it in this committee um, during the year, and and um, I think that prioritises is, is still up there, especially with those bridges in there as well. Um, so yeah, Len, did did you want to comment on that? Thank you, Michael. Um, can I just clarify a couple of things? Um, first of all, uh, 
We're looking at six years here, aren't we? So we we originally, when we first started this discussions with the committee, we were three years. Then it went out to six years. This is de uh, six years, and we went from 2.3 to now we're 1.989 billion. Have I got the numbers right? My own head. Yes, we are looking at six year uh, budget yep. from 24 to 30. And the previous ranking was the total expenditure was about 2.9 billion. And now it's reduced to about 2 billion. Was 2.9. Okay, thank you. Um, so we've, we've dropped a billion dollars. Um, can I, again, I'm just trying to get some clarity around the process that's happened. Where's the billion dollars gone? Is that, a, is that under the GPS? Is that the ship reprioritization? Is that the government basically saying, we're cutting your budget by a billion dollars? Have I got that right? So the biggest uh, contributor of the reduction is Coromandel Hauraki Resilience Program program that's formerly old, that was about 300 million now it's reduced to about 100 million mm. and there are many other contributors for the reduction but i can't give you detail but what i'm trying to get at is the total budget was 2.9 now it's 1.9 where's the who's who made that decision to cut the budget by a billion dollars is that a government decision? Sure, yeah. Okay, so going back, talking to, to my constituents, they'll want to ask, they'll want an answer to that question, where's the money gone? And then, so then now we're looking at the reprioritization, which I understand that process. Um, the the uh, original figure for Coromandel resilience was 811, it's now, uh, 248, so leaving aside the bridges for the moment, um, it's now 248. So that's a drop of 563 million for the Coromandel Resilience Program. Have I got that number right? Yes, if I refer you to paragraph 27, agenda page 22, we sought some clarification from NZTA on this. Um, their response was that um, <clears throat> the, the subsequent national prioritisation basically reduced it significantly because of the costs and limited funding availability. So that, that's the response we got back. So with that reduction, we, as a team, we had that in mind when we put the um, policy lens over the um, the blue <laughs> column yeah. that went to RAG because, uh, you know, because if you looked at the balance of submissions on the plan and, and they were overwhelmingly from Coromandel, um, that's another reason for sort of um, making sure that we are prioritising the bridges um, high up the order a little bit to sort of, a, you know, can't really, but a little bit to sort of, uh, you know, accommodate that loss um, yep. just so we can go back to the Coromandel submitters and say, okay, well, um, this is a government situation that's changed the funding package here, yep. but the ship has also elevated the bridges that, uh, you know, nearly every Coromandel submitter yep. um, raised. So as a package, you've still got attention on the Coromandel might have less funding, but the um, focus in our RLTP is, is squarely on the resilience of the Coromandel, and you're signalling to government that it's still very important regionally because of the way that you've ranked the activity. So um, I can assure you we had discussions about that and had that in mind when we were seeking information on that funding reduction and trying to balance, you know, these national regional priorities um, alongside the submitted views on the draft plan that went out for consultation. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Madeline. And and I think that's 
a really good explanation. I, I appreciate all of that. What I'm trying to do is just make sure I've got the figures sure. and the the priorities right in my own head. Um, can I just address, um, and it's come up a number of times, um, two things. First of all, the uh, Coromandel Bypass. And I think, and I've had a number of discussions with John Morrissey, who is the Coromandel councillor. Um, there is a degree of, um, you know, pragmatism around the attitude to the Coromandel Bypass. Um, it, there's a degree of understanding that not everyone in the Coromandel Township is in agreement about um, how that should progress, if at all. Um, and also, uh, there's a recognition of the support that we've had around the table from the rest of this forum um, on support for the Coromandel in general. So we're not going to die in a ditch over Coromandel bypass. Um, However, uh, having said that, um, if we've just had a shift of over 500 million on the total Coromandel resilience investment, um, and, and if the Coromandel bypass is taken out of the equation, doesn't it make sense to um, apply that to the, the wider Coromandel resilience uh, investment instead of, um, and what I'm saying is move the Coromandel bypass out of the picture or to a significantly lower priority. So that would be my initial feelings um, because I'm gonna have some some fairly concerned constituents when I go back there and say, and they ask me where's 600 million dollars gone? We thought we, we had that commitment. Um, but understanding the bigger picture, understanding that we've got a new government, understanding that they're looking to reprioritize budgets. So that's my initial thoughts. Um, the other things that I would say is um, our our council and um, the folks on my team uh, absolutely support Bully Point. It is it's a no brainer. Um, so no issues whatsoever. Um, Cambridge to Pierre, uh, obviously another major, major, um, significantly important project that um, really should get all the support that we can give it. Um, quite concerned about the MSP and the, the brutal effect on that. Um, I think that's that's something that really deserves support, and so pretty vicious, pretty vicious um, cuts through that. Um, you know, and again, it's there's a billion dollars gone out of the out of the budget. So um, we would like to see if if there's any way of supporting that, um, even if it's a stage support. Would like to see some support for that. Um, and and the the southern links, obviously, um, from a economic development point of view, and some really strong cases. Again, really important projects. So um, I would say well done to the team juggling a decreasing a decreasing fund. You've done a good job, but that's my initial thoughts on that. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Len. Yeah, I mean, it, is, it has been hard with the GPS and the ship coming out and the staff having to, you know, uh, go through not only that, but then I don't think you know, even in our uh, regional long-term plan that it was committed because we knew that everything was late coming out and and we, you know, the money's just not there anymore. You know, they've taken it out, unfortunately. But it's still, I still believe that even um, through this process that the Coromandel uh, are, um, we'd like to think that they are high on the priority. Um, you know, even the bypass, I think that's gone from three to five. So it's still in the in the top 10. Um, so yeah, and then as you say, you know, 600 million going out of resilience, but I still think it's, you know, we've, you know, they've had to cut somewhere, um, you know, in this to so it aligns because we've got to then present this to uh, the committee on the 21st and then by the 1st of August, we then have to have it to, um, um, into the um, Waka Kotahi. Madeline, did you want to comment? Oh, I I just wanted to respond um, on Coromandel Bypass with one further point, and that is that um, 
problem with, um, and you mentioned, you know, like um, maybe compensating by packaging it up with the other resilience activities. The problem with that is it pushes down Cambridge to Peerere. Um, and what sort of signal are you sending government when they're wanting to prioritise, you know, two RONs in your region and you're not, you're not recognising the national and regional benefits there? And so it just starts to push those other key projects that need to have, um, you know, a reasonable level of priority support. So again, that was um, that was the juggle. Um, if yeah, that was the that was the most difficult juggle because you then started to bump bonds projects way down the list. Thanks, Madeline. Um, yeah, I un I understand that cold hard reality of the job that you've got to try and do. Um, I'm I'm just. Mr. Chair, I just want to share something with the team, if that's all right. And um, you can tell me if this doesn't feel like the appropriate time. Um, but with the help of um, this handsome gentleman on my left here, um, who's <laughs> who supplied me with some figures, um, if we are, and you'll 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 forgive me for banging on about the the importance of the connections in the Coromandel. One of the unique challenges that we have is that if we have don't if we don't get investment in the roading and the roads are closed, there are no other options. And the, the effect of not having those options is absolutely significant from an economic point of view, but also from a climate change and emissions point of view. Now I've just done some rough figures over the weekend. If you've got when we had State Highway 25A closed, uh, and you need to go from Thames to Tairua, you're adding another 70 kilometres uh, each way to the to that journey. If you extrapolate that through and look at the number of vehicles per day and the vehicle kilometre uh, vehicle kilometres travelled per day um, and the number of days roads closed, you get to a um, CO2 emissions tonnage of 67,000 tonnes of CO2 pumped into the atmosphere from that road being closed. And that's just that one detour. That's not taking into account Tapu Kora Glen or when the Whangamapa Road went down. Um, 67,000 tonnes of CO2 emissions. Um, and, and again, that's not taking into account the, the, um, the effect on uh, Productivity um, and the effect on you know the lifestyles of, of people who have to get to hospitals, etc. Uh, that was a staggering number. I had not done this calculation before yesterday, but 67,000 tons of extra CO2 from one broken road. So the message from this is basically, um, if you want to, if you want to get um, Efficiency in your roading network, one of the things and we've talked about this already is fix your roads and do the maintenance and stop the make sure the investments there up front and stop it happening in the first place. Because yep. the, the net results are absolutely uh, staggering. Thanks, Ben. Any other comments for this? Um, yeah, Rodney? I just had a question. The Southern Links. Um, being that it's going to make a couple of dairy farms worth a hell of a lot more money, do the developers not pay a fair chunk of that, or is that like they're going to put a road through and then it's going to be a subdivision? So, I don't know, but but naive on the developing side of it. Do the developers not foot some of that bill? Or how does that work? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, we build a road and then they their land becomes a hell of a lot more. And they make a shitload of money. That's how it works. Oh, well, they'll, at some point they purchase that land. Yeah. Um, if they purchase it off the landowner, well, good good luck to the landowner. Um, at the point that they develop that land into housing or industrial or whatever, they'll go through the normal process of paying development contributions, et cetera. And that's where their costs will. That's where their costs will land. But but no, they don't contribute to the cost of the state highway. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. People either feel very lucky or very hard done by when we put a state highway through areas. I mean, it's, it's never, there's never, it's always polarized. It's one extreme or the other. <laughs> If I could yes. just, um, yeah. Um, Councillor O'Leary, Deputy Mayor O'Leary's not in the room. Um, here she is. Um, I just had a quick question around MSP projects that were removed by HCC. <laughs> um, staff might know. Was that um, to do with the local share and the, their LTP process alongside perhaps signal sent? I think Hamilton City is in a better position to answer the question. <laughs> there is someone online. Decision making framework around our low cost, low risk that will slow things down and better to the public. But it's mainly LT projects out with the steps. That answer the question. Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, it goes a long way to rationalising which ones got dropped off and which made the cut. Um, yeah, Madeline, just to your points before about um, MSP and great to hear your support, Mayor Lynn, as well. Um, yeah, I think it's really important that the Waikato does um, keep its own <laughs> long-term strategic plan. Um, we know governments change. Um, however, we know our communities as well. So um, I think it's really important that we send the signals um, carefully through this document. Um, I agree with your points about the RONs um, remaining where they are, but then also around um, MSP, great to see quite, quite a few remaining um, strategically. That's great. And then also... Um, yeah, those overarching themes of um, climate as well remaining because we know, um, you know, on one hand we've got climate resilience and then um, also trying to get, um, give people options so they can make choices around their transport. So I think, um, yeah, I really like how you've worded it around um, keeping our long-term strategic plan for the Waikato. Um, whilst also um, appreciating what the GPS is, is delivering. Yes, thanks, because um, uh, added to that is you, we're only looking at the programme right now, but obviously our front end has a 10 to 30 year vision. So what we embed in the front end is, is really future, future thinking. And so that's why climate change and MSP type um, activities are are still important in that context. The other thing I note is that the MSP activities um, that remain are, are largely business case um, activities, but but that's okay. That's setting us up on a path towards what needs to be rolled out, and we've signalled that in the front end of the document as well. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Uh, just a couple of quick questions. Thank you for both the team and everyone around here leaving Bully Point as number one. Um, that is appreciated. Uh, I just wonder, it's not going to make any difference, but you've got it down as resilience and climate change. It's also safety uh, and accessibility and that that road closes with a truck parked on the corner. The next nearest way round is a long way round the lake uh, and it is, is a safety issue as well. Um, and not for this forum, but which is part of the submission we're going to give to all regional council tomorrow around um, the long term plan there. I just a quick question, and I know it might sound a little bit pedantic or, or playing with the numbers, but when I look at um, line items two and three, and three, the bridges in the Coromandel appear in our agenda item on page 22 as a, 22, as a subset of the, the wider Coromandel resilience. Um, and I look at the budget lines. Um, for that, what would the harm be, or what would the rationale argument against bumping the bridges to number two, 
around the ability to deliver because you're looking at you know proposed budget of 34 as opposed to 248 and i guess that supposes the next question would be around the wider coromandel resilience is there a higher priority than the bridges which would get done first anyway so it's a double but it's, it's more of a um i was gonna say not a brain fart but i'm just kind of just thinking out loud and there's, i'm sure there's a question in there if we bump the bridges up because that's the if you like the weakest link and we um label this as end of life well that kind of signals a fairly strong statement around that i'll just make a comment and Natalie can give the right answer um so careful about over interpreting end of life um so in, end of life does not mean they're going to fall down tomorrow end of life means they were designed with a 50-year time horizon we're coming up to 50 years subject to inspection some of those bridges have got 20 years left in them some of them have got 10 years left in them some five so it it, it varies depend, depending on that um is there a higher priority in terms of resilience than those bridges yes there are things there are there are slips and instabilities on the network that will close the entire road if they are not addressed the bridges will still be there um, if they don't get addressed in the next three years apart from one or two which i'd be a little bit concerned about um but but yeah, we've got a priority list in terms of those bridges as well so we know the ones um you know that are a real concern the bigger issue with the bridges is where we have to take steps like we did with boundary road so boundary road is a two-lane bridge but it's currently one lane because we've pulled all the traffic into the center to stop the bridge flexing when heavy vehicles go over it that's given it 10 years so end of life yes but it's it's given it 10 years it's just really inconvenient and it would be really nice to have a two-lane bridge back whereas um pumpkin hill underslip if that went tomorrow lends 65,000 tonnes of carbon, we'd be back there again. <laughs> so that, that's sort of the difference. Um, thanks, that was kind of the answer yep. I was looking for. That, that's helpful. Thanks. You don't want to make the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, team, just to move this on, um, if everyone's happy, um, we've got a resolution here. Uh, any other discussions on the, the changes? Um, to the um, activities. Okay, we'll just put the resolution up on screen. We did break this into two and we've brought it back into one now. So that the regional land transport deliberation report um, be received and then also the subcommittee make decisions on recommended um amendments uh, to the regional uh, land transport plan so it's part a and then part b as well so we've got to update um, key drivers shaping the draft report um, recognizing the new draft government uh, gps and then also influence on section 1.4 of the draft regional transport plan update the narrative of what section 1.5 of the draft Regional Land Transport Plan is trying to achieve and challenge the transformation change, update key opportunities to include a new um, focus on opportunities for strategic roading investments. Um, and then we go down to update the growth and economic development template um, to strengthen policy around the national significant. It really comes down to E, what we've talked about, mostly about E to um, J. Update the activity tables, regional program of the transport activity as a result of final state highway investment proposal and long-term plan changes. Update the significant transport activities table. Might be happy. Really only able to talk about. Yeah. E to L, sorry. The ones we talked about. Yeah. We have to. So I'll pass just uh, e a mover L. in a second Don't for E to L. Yeah. Maybe we're only going to do E to L, but that's the topics that we talked about so far. Yeah. Yes. And um, oh, sorry. Sorry, um, Nigel. We've still taken that first part of 
we before. we can deal with A through D probably once we've had more discussion on the the secondary issues that are, are going to come up. So I think the discussion that's happened right here um, has been excellent for the program component, and that first part with the regional policy framework will have some additional context once we go through some of the the theme responses that we've got. Well, I'd like um, to move all this as one. I so oh, we'll carry on. Yep, yes. um, if you've got something to add on that, what comes out of that, and then we'll move no, this all. No, that's, that's fine. Yep. 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 Okay. So we'll let you carry on. All right. Um, so, so just in terms of the discussion, when it comes relating to the the resolutions that we've got, if if they're broken there, I think the the committee has has talked quite well about um, our significant activities, where they sit in the plan, their relationships to one another, um, how we will amend the the plan, and I think we've got uh, clear guidance here from the from the table that you've got the red column, which is effectively the the RTC recommendation. Um, and that just sort of sits on those uh, resolution points e e through l and um and then once we once we have slightly more discussion as we come down and we have um i guess some greater clarity on climate change and msp and maintenance that will give some direction for a a to d um and i don't know if that is possible to resolve that in in the way that it is. We'll just go to the mode. next section because that yep. addresses A to D. Yep. Doesn't it? And then we'll move this as one whole resolution. Oh, as one whole lot. Yep. Okay. So it just in terms of thinking about it, when you're thinking about the resolutions, the ones that we've just talked about were effectively covering E E through yep. E through L on, on that one. Can I just point out that that uh, some of those recommendations about now that you've made a decision about how we will amend the plan because we needed you to make a decision so we can therefore update parts of the plan. But um, just I think the key thing is just to make clear in this um, in this decision that you are um, uh, endorsing or um, um, accepting the, the final recommendation, which is this red priority list. So I wonder if we make that a bit clearer that um, in I want to just bring that bring that up then that so got a slide on it. Resolution yeah. uh if the update the significant One to ten. activities table. I just wonder if we just Basically. make it very clear that we are we are accepting the red column here. Yep. One to ten. Yeah. Yeah. Is so everyone happy with that? The final recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yes, it's the, the red column. It's, so it's the final recommendation that we've put before you that you're agreeing. Sorry, Chair, you're saying 1 to 10. I've got 1 to 28 down here. It's the whole lot, isn't it? It's the no, whole it would, lot. It would be, it yeah, would be the, the whole, whole lot of yeah, columns. Changes. Final recommendation. The wording change you're looking for. Well, it just says update the significant transport activities yeah. table following deliberations. Yes. So we put forward two versions today for discussion, the RAG version and the and the recommended one so I just thought you might so make it very clear that that we rec that we are updating the significant transport activities in line with in line with the recommendation yes, that you made recommendation. to the committee yeah it's which is the red column might be helpful to be very clear on what you're agreeing to so that one there Madeline. yeah the red the yep. red priority list so everyone clear Lynn I oh, still Sorry, Madeline, you've done a great job. I'm just finding myself confused about $35 million in there for Coromandel Bypass when you've told us that, that there's concerns about what the community wanted. And, and I've uh, shared with, with you that I don't think that it can afford to be priority now that we've lost all this funding. We're just about to vote on it being in there at number eight. Eight. Um, why? Sorry. Why is it, why are we voting on it staying in there at number eight? And 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 it's going to sound weird that here's me arguing about a bypass in Coromandel. Should it be in there? Is that funding not better off used somewhere else? Oh, you're suggesting it not be. In the top oh, 
because it seems hard to justify having it in there yes. at number eight with $35 million when we've all said it shouldn't be in there. So what we put before you was a starter for conversation. So, yep. um, But isn't it fair to say that the ship has made it a priority, those, those bridges? Not, that's not one of the bridges. Not. There are three other bridges. That's not one of them. The ship is agnostic. <laughs> Pointing out exactly, yeah. So is this is this just a timing thing, Madeline? It, it is. Um, it's your role yep. today to uh, provide us with a prioritised list for inclusion in the final RLTP document. So, if you wish to change the, the the ranking of these items, then we'll follow the direction of the committee. If if the resolution uh, as drafted was to proceed on this basis, we can make changes to that um, as you collectively wish. Then form that reprioritized version that would end up in the in the final document. So do you want us to do that now or do you in terms of priorities or do you want us to just um, pass the resolution and then have the discussion? Yeah. Right. So, and again, this sounds weird. Here's me saying this is a Coromandel project and I don't think it should be at number eight. So uh, yeah. I just don't think it's the right priority. I think there are other things. And I'm wearing my 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 overall region-wide hat here, as well as the wider Coromandel, but I'm also respecting the, the priorities um, of other projects in the wider Waikato region that I think um, deserve higher priority than the Coromandel Bypass. Uh, Mr and Chair, if I can go through you. Yep. Uh, so um, I think you can feel comfort that a lot of submitters that submitted on that particular issue were concerned about it mm -hmm. and not happy with it. So from a submitter point of view, I don't think it's um, dangerous, if you like, to shut down the list. I think your arguments are really sound in terms of looking at it from a wider regional perspective. Um, you've heard um, comments from um, Councillor Strange about the MSP projects and the importance of MSP still having a firm focus in our RLTP. Um, you may wish to consider whether you remove it down underneath those MSP projects. So you're giving a good signal there about the longer term importance of those types of activities for future funding for our region. So that might help you kick off a discussion. So yes, thank you, Madeline. I think that's a really good suggestion. Um, and that would certainly be my, my preference um, that we, um, we provide those signals and increased support to the MSP over and above the uh, Coromandel bypass. And there's no reason why we can't look at the Coromandel bypass into the future, but I don't think it deserves to be at number eight at this particular point in time. I think it should be moved down. Angela? Yeah, um, thank you. Um, yeah, that kind of <laughs> casts a new light on everything, uh, Mia Lynn. Um, yeah, just wondering where, where you would sort of see it sitting, what sort of number? Um, Thirteen, fourteen. Thirteen, fourteen. I really need to be guided by you. You know the MSP better than I do. Um, but where would you like to see it? Um, looking to Deputy Mayor Angela as well. Yeah, I was just. I mean, Project Five, Six, Seven, Eight, and Nine with all the MSP from what I can see is all detailed business case, um, business case, it's all sort of that um, preparation work as a package. I think that's right, isn't it, Mr. Fears, eh? Um, so uh, if you're comfortable to put it under that, that would make sense to me. At Start. number 14. Is it or would it be number 10? Because we've gone, it goes nine and then 17, doesn't it? Yeah, Plus, am yeah I the, the, the red the, column. Still working on that list. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So if I yep, may... No, other than banging it somewhere in the middle of those, that MSP work. Yeah. I th um, uh, thank you, Councillor O'Leary. I think... I think that's a, a good idea. I think keeping things on block is is a really good option. Um, I was just having a chat with the team here to try and find what might be a natural position for it. And depending on how comfortable you are, um, noting that we now do just have twenty eight prioritised activities once it once it condenses, keep keep the like type activities together. The next one down that I thought where it could go into sort of like an investment block based on. Um, improvement activities was actually just sitting under what what is number um, 21 and 22. So the investment uh, state highway one um, Piriri to to Taupo, and then just under the state highway 29 uh, Piriri to Tauranga, and then just above what is the uh, West Hamilton review. So that would that would end up repositioning it down. It would become number 22 effectively because everything else would just shift up the list but then it, what it does is it puts it in in a block with other improvement activities um, and it keeps everything else relatively well preserved you happy with that Len? i think that makes sense yep okay kevin yeah just a comment on that i note it started at three we've bumped it to eight and now we're going to drop it even further i just and i get it it's in response to submitters who were poor yeah. over this. I get that. And um honorable of Pia Lender, so what he just said. Um question here is that's not going to compromise any of the other resilience works around the Coromandel. So I just wonder whether we need to put some narrative around what is um a fairly meteoric drop in priority for the Coromandel Township from third to not even top 10, um, because that's a significant readjustment major, and it would be good to have some commentary around that in the final. Um, I think plan. also to add to that is that the argument that you've dropped 600 million, you know, out of the, what was, you know, in our original um, long-term plan. So where that was kind of used as a little bit of as, hey, we're getting these two bridges done, that's up in priority eight. So. Yeah, something around that. Angela? Oh, yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, just sort of add, to add to that as well, like doesn't outline what phase it's in. Is it implementation? Is it um, business case pre? I don't Still like planning. It. Yeah, yeah I, I would um, yeah, advocate it for it to go down to 2022. And again, there's, there's still fairly high levels of uncertainty and Madeline's talked about the um, uh, the desire from the local community to have more input, more consultation, and that's certainly not landing all in one place. Um, so some of the narrative could be around timing. It's really, um, it's not at a stage where the community is ready to get in behind and support it in, in its current state. So the narrative could be around the timing. Yes, it can't it can't justify being um, basically ready to go at the moment. David? Madeline, do we have a breakdown of where because that's a really good question of where it's at. My my understanding would be it hasn't even got an IBC yet. Yeah. So thirty five million dollars we've allowed for that's construction. That's yeah. that's not an IBC and a DBC. Could we break it down? To its component parts and then prioritise. Tana, do you know any more detail around that project? Just bring the mic down to you just a little bit. Sorry, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yes. The Akromanda bypass is not submitted in TAO yet. So I don't have detail about DBC or IBC cost yet, but I can talk to the TCDC staff directly to identify and the breakdown. Just thinking about, to Nigel's point, if if we break it down into, you know, pre and maybe even, <laughs> um, you'd only be making provision for a, a million dollars yeah. to do like an IBC, and then you could keep it at that priority and put the rest down the bottom because you're not going to be building it. for. Then you can go through that community process, 
they can say whatever they want. You might choose at that point to go no, but put that implementation down the priority list and put the preempt, leave the preempt where it is. Okay, okay folks, I'm going to move this along because I was supposed to have morning tea at half past 10. I'd really like to get this first pass, uh, the, the resolu resolution part A and B, and we still got to address um, A to D in that part A. Um, so if we're all quite happy that we'd like to move that um, bypass down to priority number 22, and all the rest will follow up. Is there anything else in the, um, you know, on the new activities or recommended um, activities you'd like to change, Kevin? So I just want to be clear because what David has suggested is a completely new line item and we split this into two. Is that what we're voting on or what we're suggesting here? Because one is... It's the investigation which allows us to go out to consultation in the Coromandel community, and the other is the implementation, which is the bulk of the funding, because that's what I heard from that, that um, monologue just a minute ago. And I'd support that. Yeah, that's too. what I was suggesting. I don't know how practical that is, because it's not in TO, so a little bit hard to break it down, but what I was suggesting was if you kept, even if it's number 14 underneath Metro Spatial Plan, just to mitigate the whole the meteoric drop of priority and to try and explain that if you kept the the component where we do a business case at 14 and then chuck the rest of that 35 million dollars down to 23 that, that certainly is achievable but if we followed the pattern of all of the other projects on this list this is information that's come from the funder or the deliverer so that would be a question for thames coromandel in terms of their long-term plan how would they look to deliver this project? And if, if they were to split that project out into its component parts, what from that could we bring into this, whether it's in TO or not? Um, so if, if Thames Coromandel were wanting to uh, do that, then we, we could reflect that in the program. But we it, this entirely comes from external sources. So it's about how we, how we reflect what the information feed is that comes into us. So to you, Mr Chair, could we resolve the order and say the number, we, we don't care what the number is, the order is these two line items. Thames Coromandel can supply the number before we result, before the final resolution of this in August or whenever it is. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I wonder if we might... Um, have morning tea. I'm sorry, to, I'm not trying to tell you, no, no. but just um, to allow the team to look at some wording for that resolution because what David's just suggested is a potential solution which would get me out of jail um, <laughs> <laughs> because I've just backed myself into a big corner. Could I, we get some alternative wording yeah. and vote okay. on it? Okay, I'll just make tea. it clear though. Is there anything else in the activities that you'd like to change? Re recommended. Okay. Mr Chair, yeah, can sorry, I just Matt? respond to um, Councillor Taylor's um, point about yep. the narrative about it dropping? Um, and I just wanted to um, remind you that, um, that Section 4 of the RLTP describes the programme um, and, it, and it talks about the top 10 activities and describes what we're trying to achieve through those activities. So there is place there to talk about the Coromandel Bypass, where it's at, um, you know, some of the challenges along the way to, to um, finalise it in terms of what it might look like and everything. Um, so there is, I just wanted to, to respond to your point that there is um, scope there for us to explain the change. And in fact, that whole section will need to be rewritten because of the changed activity. So, and we'll bring that back to you. Okay, so we'll, we'll break for morning tea now um, and we'll look at bringing um, that down to number 22 with the wordings that's appropriate um, that the committee can decide on after morning tea. And then str straight after that, we'll go straight on to part A, Nigel, um, and then address A to D, and then we'll do the resolution. Everyone happy with that? Team? Okay, so 10 minute break, back at five past 11. Probably a little bit too complicated.